traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Uh, it's the Wilk Report. I'm Michael Wilk, coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio, with a review of the the fifth episode of the third revival of the Twilight Zone. And uh, the title card here says it all. Seriously, are you fucking kidding me? Because this episode was just bad. I mean, so I mean, just that the premise itself is it just breaks suspension of disbelief. Basically, an eleven-year-old gets elected president of the United States. It's an impossibility. Constitutionally, it cannot happen. All right. There are three requirements to be eligible to run for president. You have to be a natural-born citizen. You have to be over the age of thirty-five, and you have to have lived in the United States for at least fourteen years. The kid here in this episode, called Wonderkind, is 11. So he he only uh, meets one of the three requirements. So uh, he's ineligible to run. And yet somehow uh, he manages to, to get elected. It, it's so unrealistic it breaks suspension of disbelief. I mean, five episodes in so far with this and... You know, th- th- this just makes me lose all interest in finishing the sh- the the season because I, I really I-, I just have been completely insulted by this episode. It's that bad. So uh, let me give you a breakdown of the plot here. So, uh, uh, campaign manager Raph Hanks, played by John Cho, uh, you know, he starts off. He's in in the hospital on an operating table, and uh, you know, he's. Uh, remembering the events that led up to his hospitalization and like some years previously uh you know he, he got he was a political campaign manager uh for an incumbent president uh, president stevens played by uh night courts john larroquette uh and uh, you know he's so convinced that uh, the guys won re-election but no uh he didn't and uh Basically, his career went down the toilet after that. So, uh, you know, cut to a few years later, there's a new guy who is even more unpopular than the last one. And people are fed up and uh, Raph is in a bar getting drunk and he spots a a, a news item about an 11-year-old YouTube star uh, named Oliver Foley who is uh, announcing his candidacy for president. Well... Obviously, this has to be a joke because, you know, again, an 11 year old cannot run for president legally. Um, but somehow, uh, th- this just. So, uh, yeah, somehow Raft decides, well, uh, yeah, he's going to go to Oliver's parents and have him run for president. And, uh, you know, of course, Oliver being 11, he can't really answer any questions on the issues. And,. Uh, you know, he's humiliated during debates and, you know, Raph then uh, goes for the sympathy vote uh, uh, when he finds out that uh, the kid's dog is dying of cancer. And of course, uh, Oliver wins the Iowa caucus and, you know, uh, basically he rides that uh, sympathy train to the presidency. And, uh, you know, then, of course, Oliver takes control and, you know, that, you know, his actions uh, really kind of lead Raph to uh, regret having uh, having helped him get elected. So, uh, you know, when Oliver realizes that Raph isn't on his team anymore, uh, you know, he basically admits that he lied about his dog dying to get votes. And then he has the secret service shoot Raph. And that's how he gets shot and ends up in the hospital. And of course, uh, you know, the episode ends where Raph learns that the surgeon, uh, operating on him is an apathetic child. Uh, because uh, Oliver has passed a uh, signed a bill into law that uh, forbids adult doctors. Uh, I mean, like I said, I mean th- th- this is just so badly written that the concept itself is ludicrous to the point that it breaks suspension of disbelief. Uh, th- th- there's just no way 
that they can believably explain how a child can run for president. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, Caligula Jerome, yeah, he's an overgrown child, but he's a geriatric child, so he, he meets the technical requirements for, for being able to run. But, you know, the, the, the premise here is just so unrealistic and so bad that, you know, I, I can't fathom why Jordan Peele would even agree to attach his name to this episode, uh, which really leads me to, to wonder... You know how. You know, uh, you know just how much control Jordan Peele actually has over this show, because I can't really understand how uh, someone of his caliber who directed Us and Get Out, you know, which are really good movies. You know, I like them, but you know he he wrote and or co-wrote those and and directed them. You know, and he exercised a fair degree of creative control. I wonder just how much he has on this Twilight Zone uh, revival because, you know, I, I've been getting shades of the 2002 revival since this latest incarnation began, and this one is just so awful. I, I just cannot imagine that Peel is really in charge behind the scenes here because, you know, th this one is so low in quality in terms of the story that it, it just boggles my mind how we could let this even get past him so uh you know if he's if he's just the producer and the narrator and that's his the extent of his contribution i really don't see this show lasting and yet the bloody thing has been renewed for another season despite uh out of five episodes so far in the season or or maybe seven i think now um you know, maybe one has half, been halfway decent. I mean, this is not the way you have a revival. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, if you liked it, please explain why and how you arrived at your liking this episode. Because uh, I, I, I just am grasping for reasons to actually get this. I mean, the, the, this episode pretty much has me giving up on the show. I, I can't uh, justify... Uh, damaging my brain capacity <laughs> any further by watching more of this crap. Um, you, you know, I mean, if you want me to uh, continue and let you know, you know, how awful or, or how mediocre the rest of the season is, let me know in the comments. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if you'd rather I move on to something else, you know, I'm, you know, at this point I'm really ready to do that. So, uh, yeah, if you like what you've heard and you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. And if you want to help support the channel, keep the lights on, head over to our Patreon or subscribe to our page, become a donor. We can't do this without you. Until next time, this is Michael Wilk for The Wilk Report saying, take care, good night, I'm out.